Although there are some fantastic terminal-based screenshot programs like Scrot and Mame, we won't be looking at them today. We're going to look at some nice GUI ones. And first up is Flameshot. If you can access it via the menu after installing, you see the nice little purple icon there. And you click it and nothing seems to happen because it actually goes into the taskbar at the top and there it hangs until you need it. It's got basic configuration, but what we'll just do is we'll just get it going. It says select an area with a mouse or press escape to exit. So you, you know, you can got color picker, mouse wheel to change the thickness and uh, space to open the side panel. But for this, we're just gonna, just gonna use the left mouse button and select an area that we want to look at, which will be the screen fetch. And immediately at the bottom, you will see a whole array of different options. You've got a pencil marker to do some drawing, uh, like this. I'm just gonna, uh, couple of eyes, there you go. Changes the whole uh, FreeBSD logo there. Fantastic. You can change color, of course. I'm gonna leave it in purple. You've got some basic line tools, which will basically just draw a line but in any direction you want you've got an arrow tool which will can well yeah if you've got anything you want to highlight you post uh, draw attention to something or give it an impression of uh, movement it's very useful you've got a basic uh, square an empty square so if you want to highlight an area it's all very nice You've got a filled rectangle. Well, I'll about to do it again. You've got a filled rectangle, of course. If you want to write something in that to draw attention, you've got an empty circle. Or on an elliptical circle, whichever you want to do. You've got a nice marker. If you want to highlight some text by not covering it up, though, just as a normal marker would do. There you go, not to stare. On there and just highlight that. You're going to, of course, change color if you wish. A nice yellow marker would be better. If this is if you want to uh, blur out an area. If you wanted to keep something secret. <laughs> do the menu. Uh, and this shows the dimensions of the selection. If, for instance, you wanted to need it, if you needed that for saving to a specific size. Uh, this one you can uh, move around because you can change the basic selection. You can undo and then redo selections. So I'm just going to undo all the things that we've done. There you go. Do, 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 do. There you go. And you can put them back on if you like. can copy to the clipboard and it's uh, there it is nice picture up there if you want to go and uh, paste it into something like Inkscape we'll just take another selection it does get rid of your current selection once you do that which is kind of annoying but you know we can live with that uh, if you want to save if you want to save a uh, copy of it again you have to reselect uh, you can leave and uh, upload it to Imager, if you've got an Imager account, of course. There you go. Very nice. And just one more time. And you can choose a, a different application to open the capture if you want. So if you've got a specific, I don't know, piece of imaging software like GIMP or Inkscape that you would like it to open, you can use that instead. Next is Lumina Screenshot. Again, you just go down the menu and click it. Uh, this one immediately comes up on the screen. Let's move up. And its default setting straight from the, the start is that it'll take a picture of your entire desktop. So because I've got three monitors, it'll take a very large image. You can uh, take a picture of the entire screen, a single screen, a single window, or select an area. 
dark. This one we're just going to uh, select this area again. There we go. If you want to zoom in and out, if you want to actually get some more detail in there, it's fine. And that's it. It's a very basic application. It'll do the job. There's no annotation. It's just a screen capture tool. That's it. Next is Shutter. Now, Shutter is a little bit more than a screen capture. It's a bit like uh, Flame Shot in the sense that you can annotate. So you can go through the different selections, which is available on the menu at the top, so you don't have to go into a pull-down menu to uh, tell it. So we want a selection, and again, we'll just uh, select this. Or you can take a picture of the, uh, the entire desktop. And I like it actually tabs each new uh, picture, which is pretty cool. Well, that caps with the menu in motion, that's very nice. Yeah, oh, not so big deal, okay, we'll walk over that one. Right. edit this one I think yeah brings up a separate window as you can see with the editing tools already there so you got your, your translucent markers your funny pattern markers <laughs> oval and circle draw and you can change the uh, opacity and the color of course so if you want some of the background picture to come through then you can And you can write. It's an interesting thing is that I was used to uh, editing within the text marker. And I didn't notice that it opened a separate window, which you do all your editing, which is kind of nice. So you just type blah, 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 blah. So it's just nonsense. Change color to a try white. And then you can change the font. And there you go, it's very nice. And you can, uh, like the other one, if you want to do some privacy, you can actually just blur it out, pixelize it. And you got your arrow, pretty standard things really. And lines and brushes. Very nice. And what I find is interesting, you can actually move the picture underneath it around and you keep all your annotations still. Which is very, which is, I like that. It's good. A more in-depth uh, description of the different things you can get. And that's that for that. Don't save it. Okay. Very nice. And you can, uh, I like that you can export as a PDF, export to PostScript or send by email, which I think is very nice. It's an interesting... Uh, Edition. Okay. Next is KSnip. KSnip is a bit more, it's more in line with the aluminum one, but with a few more additional uh, abilities. It's not as smooth as Flame Shot, but it'll get the job done. So you open it up and it's uh, just basically a taskbar that floats in the middle of the screen. It's got basic things, uh, timer, new yeah. settings, uh, undo, redo, copy and save. So if we just new, uh, there we go, you can select the part you want. What I do like is the way that it zooms in so you can actually get a really good detail of what you're trying to copy. Which could be handy if you're doing a chart and you want to get the right part of it. Okay, very nice. So we'll just... Uh, of the usual. And there you go. Oop, so it's, so it's coming underneath. There you go. We'll get there in the end. Right. 
Uh, right from the start, you can actually see it's got the basic tools. So you've got your line drawing, you know, your basic drawer, your text. Uh, change the color. Delete them. There you go. And smiley faces. I didn't do it on this particular demonstration, but uh, you can change the smiley face to anything. So it's uh, any kind of emojis. You've got the image blur tool. Pencil, pen, arrows, of course. I do like these ones because they've got a nice little shadow underneath them, which is uh, handy. And your marker. You've got a numbering tool, which I think is very handy. And it's sequential as well, so it goes up the more times you do it. Uh, you've got basic square, which you can change to uh, different patterns if you wish. And you can, same with the numbers, you can actually change the numbers to a different uh, design. So yes, very nice. It's a good lightweight tool, this. And uh, it, it does what it's meant to do. Next is LX Image. Now, this is just really, um, it's an image viewer. But with the capability to be a screen capture tool. Um, beyond that, it really doesn't do any more. But as a screen capture tool, you know, it'll get the job done, nice and quick. So when you first start it up, it's uh, just an image viewer. All the basic tools of an image viewer, you know, you can rotate the picture and zoom in and out and all various knickknacks like that. You got backwards and forwards to the next pictures. You can open, reload, save, copy, paste. Rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise, zoom, fit screen, and slideshow. But what we want in this particular instance is the option to capture screenshot. There isn't a uh, hotkey for that, which is odd, but you know. But they were just telling you that it's, a script, it's uh, an image viewer. So if you capture screenshot, you have to go down specifically to, uh, to ask it to do this. You do the whole screen, the current window only, or captain an area. Um, the basic timer. So I'm just going to five seconds. And there we go. So yeah, it's a, it's a basic, um, basic image viewer and screenshot tool. There is an option to do some um, annotations, but again, like the screenshot thing, you have to actually go down to uh, the menu and tell it. So if you go down to annotations toolbar, a very basic set comes up. I don't think there's any ability to do any typing, but you've got your shapes, which only show up after you let go of the mouse button. And your basic numbers, so really, uh, there's not much use with it. It's not as flexible as the others, but it's quick and simple if you want a screenshot program. Very nice. And if you rotate, it loses the annotations, which, yeah, is not ideal. So you have to do them again. And your basic save and print, etc. Very nice. So you've got a nice range there from the very high end uh, flame shot and shutter to K snip and down to luminous screenshot. Yeah, it's very good. So you've got quite a few options there. And I know that there are console variations and, uh, you know, obviously, like say, Scrot and MAME. But, you know, sometimes you want a little, a little bit extra. So hopefully you'll find something here which might be of interest to you. If you've got any other suggestions, then please leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll pin to the top the most interesting ones. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.